All right. I'm coming around to check these do nows. Ugh. Anybody have some paper? I need to do my do now. We've been in here for like 15 minutes. Oh my gosh. Hey, hello. Excuse me. Hey. Uh, Where's your do now? Uh, uh, who cares about do nows when my heart has been pierced by the most beautiful spirit and face? Um, uh, is it your heart or your hand that was pierced? What happened to your hand, man? Okay, so in chemistry, we were doing a lab and a girl dropped some glass, so I picked it up. Um, didn't Mr. Mickens tell us not to do that? Hey, I was still in the cab when y'all learned that, but anyway, I picked it up and the most beautiful girl was standing there. <sighs> Her name is Melody. Um, Melody what? Uh, Melody Barnes? Ugh, that girl is ugly. <gasps> Her room is dirty. Excuse me? How dare you spread duplicitous slander about my love? Duplicitous? Man, that's my twin sister. What? what? Y'all look nothing alike. They both came from the same animation. What? Huh? Anyway, you have no chance. She's going to college next year. Ugh. Well, I'll let this cut be my everlasting reminder of our love that never came to fruition. Ugh, you are such a simp. <laughs> that little cut will definitely be gone by the time she's in college, and probably by next week. Your body can repair itself fairly quickly with simple cell division, a process in which a cell divides into two or more cells. Cell division is responsible for our growth and development. It makes us all genetically unique, and it can repair our bodies. The skin cells around that cut will go through one type of cell division known as mitosis, where one diploid body cell splits into two genetically identical diploid cells over and over again until you're healed. All of your body cells or somatic cells undergo this type of cell division. Uh, diploid? What does that mean? Well, you already learned that the nucleus contains blueprints or codes to determine what goes on in the cell. All of this info is coded on DNA, which we'll learn in more detail later. But this info is wound up tightly onto chromosomes when it's time for cells to divide. Since your body was formed from your mom and dad, each of your body cells contain two sets, one from your mom and one from your dad. Hence the prefix die. This characteristic comes in handy to create genetically identical copies of your body cells. And it's quite impressive. This process is much more detailed, so research the details on your own if you're curious. Your cells spend most of their time in interphase, getting ready to divide by replicating or copying the DNA. By prophase, the show is ready to start and the DNA condenses into chromosomes. The original chromosome and its copy, sister chromatids, become linked by centromeres and the nuclear membrane disintegrates. They line up in the middle in metaphase and are split apart by spindle fibers during anaphase. The nuclear membrane forms around the chromosomes in telophase and the cytoplasm splits in cytokinesis. And you have... Oh, a copy of the same cell we had before with the same number of chromosomes as before too. Exactly, two diploid cells. So if that creates genetically identical cells, why is it that Matt and his fine sister look completely different? Hey, do not call that creature fine. Well, one, they don't look completely different. And two, were Matt and his sister created from body cells? Well, I mean, it definitely involved Two bodies, you know what I mean? Uh, I hate this class. Yeah, when it comes down to reproduction, we don't want to produce identical copies of ourselves, unless we're bacteria. So prokaryotes or bacteria do this to reproduce. It's called binary fission, starting with one haploid prokaryote bacteria, right? And creating two identical haploid prokaryotes. But for us multicellular organisms out here, you know, that would definitely move us away from biodiversity in our communities. We know in order to reproduce sexually, 
It involves two sex cells or gametes. And these cells cause us to all be genetically unique. And that means siblings are genetically unique. Twins, even identical twins are still genetically unique. And it's due to the way that these sex cells are formed in a third type of cell division called meiosis. Starting with one diploid cell in the gonads, creating not two, but four genetically unique haploid sex cells. Four? Ugh, that sounds like extra work. Same as before, the DNA is copied and wound into chromosomes. We have two chromatids. But here's the difference. Instead of just lining up in the middle, they do a special hug. I thought this whole thing was actually about a special hug. Uh, stop. Crossing over causes a section from one chromosome to be switched or recombined with another. Oh, so that's what causes the differences. So like, without crossing over, the result would be just the exact same cell. Not only that, but once these two unique daughter cells are produced, they split again. No crossing over into four daughter cells, making them even more unique than they were at the first split. And these four cells are gametes. So they could be sperm cells or egg cells. Those sex cells don't look like they have enough chromosomes, do they? Right, like how can a sperm cell create a whole baby with just half of the chromosomes? Um, duh, it needs the other half from the egg. Exactly. Gametes or sex cells are haploid. They only have half the number of chromosomes from the original diploid cell. So that when it combines or fertilizes an egg, the result, a zygote, will have half of its chromosomes from dad and half from mom. Humans have 46 chromosomes in each body cell. So the sex cells or gametes from a human would have how many? since they're haploid? Um, 23. How'd you get that? Well, I mean, if sex cells are haploid, half of 46 is 23, Mr. Mickens. Okay. Well, the gamete of a horse has 32 chromosomes. How many chromosomes would a diploid cell of a horse contain? Is it 64. That's 32 times two. Great. So we denote diploid as two in two times the number of chromosomes. Haploid would simply be denoted as N. Man, how do people know about all of this? Well, it has been studied in detail over the years. People just have human cells sitting around to look at? Well, <laughs> no, they get them from humans. One woman in particular has really helped us study cells and their division. Her name was Henrietta Lacks. Yeah, I read all about her. Oh, well, tell us more. Okay, so Henrietta was a black woman who developed ovarian cancer. And cancer comes from a rapid division of cells, actually. So when she died, after seeking treatment, they stole her cells. And they coded the strain as a HeLa. So like her first two initials, her last name initials. And they performed like many experiments and even helped to create many treatments and like vaccines from her cells. And they never told her family or gave them any money. Well, that's a little shady. But she's been honored in recent decades and her name is becoming well known and we honor and salute her. Period. Okay, well, learning all of this, I feel much better, Mr. Mickens. So years mm. later when I start my family, at least I know there's a chance that the babies won't look anything like Matt. Hey. Oh, Meet me outside real quick. Oh, let me delete some stuff and clean up some storage on my phone because I need to record this. Ooh, uh, and I cell division is very important. And yes, unlimited cell division can lead to cancer. But without cell division, you would have never grown from the fertilized egg that you started as. Your cuts would never heal. And due to meiosis, we would just be clones of our parents out here with no biodiversity to benefit from. So here's to being unique. And thank your parents, 
grandparents, and all of your ancestors for passing on great DNA. It's in your genes. Thanks for watching and stay tuned. Nothing but death can keep me uh, from her. Yeah, man, if that's what it takes. That's my twin sister. What? what? Y'all look nothing alike. They both came from the same animation. What? Huh?